Welcome. Today is December 4th. This is the Minecraft Developer Sync. All right. I uh, hope everybody had a good week. Uh, we had a lot of uh, good things happen this week. Uh, let's see how many more good things have happened this week. Uh, let's start with Ken. How's it going, Ken? You got those boards working? So I've got uh, my board. And uh, yeah, I mean, the uh, LEDs and the GPIO switches and the volume appear to be working. And I pretty much can start work on you know, converting or creating a personality for this particular type of board with the existing infrastructure. Uh, the rabbit hole I went down to went down today, though, was trying to get the audio working on the QT image. Um, and, you know, that's the whole I2S compiling and everything. Uh, so I'm actually uh, recompiling the kernel and I've got some issues that I could follow up with uh, the Blue Systems people on regarding QT. But then I remembered that this is actually Panacore's issue. So uh, I'm probably not going to bother building the I2S driver and stuff for here. Um, I have some information on what needs to be set up, but I'm assuming Panacore already will know that. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and get the other pieces of the hardware working for our environment so that when the Panacore image is ready, it can be pushed to the Mark II branch and it can be part of it. And assuming they do their job with getting the I2S drivers compiled and working and all the issues I've seen here, we should be good to go. OK, great. So Kevin verified that the I2S was working. Um, I assume he did that on a, a basic Raspbian image. Um, right, and I, and I validated that work here as well. So I have the Raspbian image up and running. I can see the device. I can you know, uh, listen to uh, it play. So that's absolutely true. Okay. But getting it running on a 32-bit Raspberry Pi versus a 64-bit Alpine image, um, there's some work to be done. OK. All right. That's good to know. Uh, so you're going to, uh, so you've punted that over officially to Panticore to get some I2S drivers working? They already have this JIRA ticket in there from last week. OK. Or two weeks ago, right? So I haven't uh, followed up on that. The only follow-up I would do is once I get our stuff working, you know, the volume, the switches, and the LEDs integrated in our code, uh, if I had spare bandwidth, I can go ahead and recompile the uh, Linux headers and stuff on the uh, QT image and give them any pointers if they get stuck. But I suspect that's probably, I suspect they'll have it working before I get to that point. Okay. Yeah, it seems like there might need to be some, uh, it, collaboration there to get this all working because um you know uh i don't really know what's involved with the i2s drivers but you know if you've got an example of them working in one operating system and uh and you know you need you need them working in a different operating system um you know you it seems like you both you each have half of the the the, the puzzle that you need right like they're, they're not going to you know be able to monkey around with core the same way you are uh, to get the audio drivers working and that sort of thing. Yeah, um, but this has nothing to do with core. This is OS level stuff. This is, is okay. Um, yeah, this is simply to get the I2S device driver for audio showing up under A play. Okay. As far as yeah, as far as the underlying configuration goes for the uh, boot config dot text stuff and everything, I've got that kind of cloned over from the Raspberry Pi image and working. Okay. So I see that stack correct. There's a couple of kernel modules that'll have to be installed um, that, again, I'm assuming they'll know. So the point is, I'm going to get our stuff going, and then as soon as I'm done, I'll turn to the image and say, now I want to see it working on the Panacore image. And if they haven't done their, you know, that work by then, then I'll engage with them and go over the steps necessary to get it working, um, which may require us to reach out to Blue Systems. I just don't know yet. Okay. Uh, well, let's try to push that as quickly as we can because, you know, uh, depending on whether what the state of the rest of the system is, um, I don't want to get, just get into a deadlock of, you know, people waiting for yeah, each other. Yeah, no, no, my, the reason I decided to go this route is we have to have our stuff integrated into our code anyway. Mm -hmm. So I'll do that first. If, if Panacore is not done, then obviously we'd both want to do a full court press on getting the image 
the kernel, you know, with the right driver is running. Okay. Um, you know, remember that they switched over from 32-bit to 64-bit recently. So some of that work would have been throwaway if they would have got it done on the 32-bit anyway, since 64-bit requires different headers and different stuff. I mean, I, you know, I got it running on 32-bit, but on 64-bit, there's a missing byte shift, you know, header file and stuff like that. So I just decided to punt on that, get our stuff, which we absolutely need done first done anyway, and then rally back around with Panacore early next week. Okay. Sounds good. Um, all right. Thanks. Uh, let's go on to Gez then. How's it going, Gez? Uh, yeah, it's going all right. Um, the Panacore guys got the Wi-Fi Connect um, stuff all wired up, and so uh, the images, there was a small breakage as they were transferring everything across to that to 64-bit builds. Um, uh, so it's it's connected, but it's not it's not you know going through the processes as you'd expect it to. So I need to get back with them and and figure out what's going on there. Um, they were they were expecting another a separate um, edition coming in, but my understanding was that that was all branding kind of stuff um, and EAP support, but everything else was meant to work at the moment. Um, anyway, so I've got to follow up with them on that. Uh, that was all overnight. Um, other than that, I got the uh, Ken stuff working um, and uh, yeah, went back and forth with him a little bit to, to make sure we had the, the steps to, to reproduce, um, reproduce that, which is mostly, I think we're, we're pretty there, aren't we? Um, I, you said you had an issue doing it on a different image or something. Are you talking about me and, and getting everything running? So yeah, I've, yeah. I've adopted a hands-off attitude regarding the Panacore image and have uh, switched to working off the QT image uh, since yeah. everything in the Panacore but image. You, you said that the GPIO stuff, like, did you, anyway, I'll, I'll follow up with you after. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I've just been um, sending across all the details of that to Panacore so they don't have to, you know, mess around. They can just drop it straight in, hopefully. Um, uh, and started looking at the, I had a quick look at the VF control USB source um, and the licensing for that means that we can't, we can't distribute the source at all. Um, so we can only distribute binaries, which is, which is a bit of a, um, oh, um, I, I have an update on that. We did actually get permission to distribute the source for that. Really? Um, I'll, I'll, uh, yeah. Um, if I don't give that, send that over to you, uh, uh, ping me on that. But I, I did get at least an okay. email from them saying that sure we can use it. Um, so we can make, we can put the source in a publicly available repo. That was my understanding, but let's, let's go take a look at yeah, it. Yeah, cool. Because the the licensing file says otherwise, so. Yeah. We want to make sure that we have that in writing, <laughs> so we don't right. get. <laughs> um, yeah, it just it obviously, you know, particularly with our community, they're they're very keen to see um, the source for everything and make sure that everything um, running on the device is uh, is open and and you know not containing anything that it shouldn't inside there. Um, uh, but anyway, I've I've dropped the binary in the Microsoft devices repo for the moment. Anyway just so that it lives somewhere and, and we can reference it and stuff. Um, uh, that's about it now, I think. Oh, and uh, we did, okay, did a translation run, um, which was really good. So uh, a lot of skills getting translation updates um, and it also came in an opportune time to, to test the, uh, the CI um, updates that we did recently um, so that we're, we're running concurrent builds and that all seems to be working really smoothly so that's good all right cool yeah i saw a lot of uh, translation tickets coming through <laughs> recently yes it's something that we need to look at from a higher level but um for the moment that's what it is all right cool all right uh chris Vair.
So today I spent time looking at the um, adding some device level metrics to our um, metric stack in Grafana. Um, did some coding around that and just about done with the coding and we'll start testing this afternoon. Um, once that is done, I think my initial pass at metrics will be done and then um, I'll move on to the, uh, on Monday, I'll move on to the, um, to the new uh, membership stuff. Okay, that sounds great. Uh, Derek, you're up. All right, so today I've been balancing a little bit of helping um, mostly Chris Adair and uh, start the ordering process uh, for the um, for the, the initial run and just kind of handing over thing, handing off things and answering some questions. We had a meeting about that earlier um, as well. Uh, also got the quote back. Um, you know, everybody that was on that meeting got, I think, copied on it. The quote back from uh, the the fulfillment and uh, kit assembly um, solution. And so we reviewed that. And uh, personally, I think it's gonna it's gonna work out. And we need to discuss a few more things, but I'm feeling good about it. Um, <clears throat> And then the uh, the thing uh, the other things I was wrapping up was um, I had a successful print last night of the full audio chamber and one print solution. So this is all just one print, which means we can double the capacity of printing these. I was actually really happy with this. Um, <clears throat> so I had a couple changes to that uh, this morning because I forgot to remove a few things, but that was quick. And then. I've been working on getting the camera oriented a little bit better on the laser cut version. I finished that and I'm um, tweaking a few things still in the 3D print version. So now this guy will sit right in the middle, uh, on the top. It's got a little part of the laser cut design that holds it in place. Um, oh, nice. Okay. So it'll be in the middle. So the yeah, side right there. Yep, the middle right and and it sits and I tested it so it sits back the it actually sits behind the screen like this but it's um you know you don't catch the edge of the screen or anything in in the view of the camera so it's all good <laughs> great okay so yeah that's me that sounds awesome. Uh, so what's next up for you? Um, well, I got to finish this on the 3D print version. Okay. Finish it. Mostly, mostly this, like, I'm still going back and forth a little bit on how the slider works um, to close off the, you know, our, our mechanical shutter mute kind of digital mute thing. Ah, I see. So okay. I, I got to finish that and then, um, I need to requote. Uh, so we'll this this will save us maybe three bucks, three four bucks, and so I need to requote a bunch of stuff um, for Josh and Chris, and have that all packaged up and ready in account. So when it's time to order, we just hit go. So that's my goal Monday to have all that ready, so that um, you know whoever makes whoever says when it's time to go can just go into the accounts and say you know order quantity X and will be good. Um, that sounds awesome. All right. Yeah. Um, uh, Josh, do you have anything you want to share with us? Sure. We bought many, many things. So things are on the move. Um, the pie order just dropped uh, a few minutes ago. The screens were on the move as of last night, although we're still working out how to transfer money to China safely. Um, and uh, basically, we're, anything that's over five dollars uh, should be moving by the end of the day. A lot of it already is moving. Uh, the 3D print went extremely well, so um, I have a copy of the one that Derek has as well, um, sitting in my printer, and I've, it has been reported that it is solid. Um, I did want to provide one quick piece of feedback, Derek. The the ventilation holes on the 3D printed enclosure are um, right angle corners, right? The little ventilation stack of holes that goes around the outside of the rim. 
Yeah. It'd be awesome if those were rounded corners because they would print much, much better. Oh, uh, yeah, they are. They are in a new design. They are. Oh, okay. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, the, uh, and then, I, then I'm, I guess I will, will come at it and come at this with a question more than anything else. So do we have a working Mark II? Ah, you missed the first bit. Uh, yes. We have all of the parts of a working Mark II. Um, but we do not have it integrated with a Panticore image yet. So that's the next, seems like the next step. Okay. And we're having some discussions about some promotions and stuff now that we have working stuff. So um, is there a, a estimated ETA on the working Panticore version? Because the first ETA was two days ago and the second ETA was today. So yeah, so I mean, I've got an image that I can use. I don't have like I've got the old SJ201, so the audio out has the, still has the issue, but um, I can talk to the to the device on my on my kitchen counter. Um, the what they're working on at the moment is the, the Wi-Fi Connect and getting that squared away. Um, and then there's a, a bunch of stuff like currently you can't use any of the buttons, for example, on the the LEDs and all that sort of stuff. So none of the SJ201 is in there yet. Um, they were working on the that, you know core functionality first, and then um, getting to to all the other tickets. So, uh, okay. and yeah. then is is uh, we got an SJ two hundred one rev four to ten. Um, Kevin was working on some more. What's what's the? I am not advocating for one of these for me. So let me just start with that. What's the? Where do these need to be? Um, do we need to get two to Europe and one to you guys? Okay, and. Um, <laughs> okay, and just yeah, that, the, just in the SJ two hundred one, though, like I can do every, like everything else. We'll just swap over from the previous thing. Okay, and we can drop those overnight in a FedEx box. So, um, and we will simply mark them ITAR um, uh, weapons uh, uh, weapons targeting hardware, and, and just see what happens. Uh, excellent, cool. So, so we're very, very, very close on that. Um, it sounds like everything's coming together. Um, yay, I'm shut up now. <laughs> yeah, it does sound like we should coordinate uh, a, a bit um, on our priorities for Panticore because, um, yeah, the we, it seems like we have a, a working image now that runs on the, uh, on the hardware, right? Uh, but uh, now we need to start getting our drivers and that kind of stuff that really you know makes it a mark ii integrated and now we've got two versions of the hardware out there that are not compatible so we have to decide which versions they're going to actually work on um, obviously they can't really work on the rev4 until they have one of those boards in-house uh, so let's try to prioritize the work that they're doing on the rev3 that syncs up with the rev4 stuff right so like getting communicating over the i to c bus that's common work. That's going to be useful for both systems, right? Um, communicating over the USB to the XMOS chip is not useful because we don't need that in the Rev4. Um, getting the I2S version up and running is absolutely necessary for the Rev4 board, but I don't know if they can work on that until they actually have a Rev4 board in house. So I don't know. Um, Gez, uh, if you you know, try to uh, coordinate their priorities there, uh, make sure they're not like wasting cycles on things that they don't need to do uh, for the Rev3 boards at this point. Um, yeah, so we shouldn't need VF control USB anymore anyway, right? No, but we Is do that... need it. There's an I2C version of the same thing. Yeah, yeah. So uh, ultimately, we'll you know we'll need that version. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, OK, great. Yeah, hey, this is excellent progress. We've, all the pieces are, are definitely coming together. Um, we've got parts on order. Um, this is very exciting. So thanks, everybody. Um, we will check in again on Monday. Um, but if you've got anything uh, that you know you need to share issues in the meantime, obviously uh, feel free to reach out. So thanks.